Configuring OSPF on Cisco iOS is done the following way. To start OSPF v2, which is for IPv4, we do router OSPF and then a process ID. The process ID can be any number. That number is unique to the router. It's not shared with other neighbors. To start OSPF v3, which is for IPv6 only, we do IPv6 router OSPF and then again the process ID. Some network operators will configure the process ID to be the same as their BGP autonomous system number, but indeed any number will do. To add interfaces in OSPF, we need to look at how we configure OSPF defaults. We start the OSPF process and we mark all interfaces as passive by default. This will prevent OSPF from automatically trying to find a neighbor on every single interface. The ISP best practice is to then activate OSPF on specific interfaces we want to find adjacencies. The last thing we want to do is establish OSPF with an uh, external peer or upstream provider, or worse, with one of our customers. Now, on Cisco iOS, enabling OSPF on an interface does two things. First off, it enables the Hello protocol to form neighbor relationships and adjacencies with other routers connected to that interface. And it also announces the interface subnets into OSPF. We need to be careful. We really have to avoid enabling the Hello protocol on untrusted networks. In other words, those outside of your autonomous system. This is industry best practice, but it's a frequent error made by many network operators. And in many cases on public infrastructure, we see network operators leaking the internal OSPF or even trying to find OSPF adjacencies with other infrastructure outside of their network. The I in IGP means interior, and it's really important to remember this in the case of deploying OSPF. Forming neighbor relationships is done by starting the router OSPF process, setting the process ID, marking all interfaces as passive, doing no passive for the interface we want to find the adjacency on, and then going to the interface and activating OSPF on it by using the IP OSPF process ID command and specifying which area the interface will sit in. This is the modern configuration syntax. On much older versions of iOS, Cisco used to configure OSPF by running on the subnet. We don't do this anymore. We run OSPF on the actual physical interface. For OSPF version 3, the CLI is exactly the same as the slide shows. This time, we're just using IPv6 router OSPF. And to activate on the interface, we do IPv6 OSPF and the process ID, and then specifying which area the interface should be sitting on. Cisco IOS sets the interface cost automatically. Unlike other interior protocols, the cost is calculated based on the interface bandwidth. The formula that iOS uses is 100 million divided by the interface bandwidth in bits per second. So this is fine for interfaces up to 100 megabits per second, which was perfect when OSPF was developed in the early 90s. The fastest interface back then was FIDI with 100 megabits per second. But nowadays, we see 100 gigabit Ethernet, 400 gigabit Ethernet being developed. This automatic cost generation really does not make any sense. And in fact, many operators today now develop their own interface cost strategy, as they do for interior protocols like ISIS. To do that, it's a simple interface command, IP OSPF cost and a value which will set the metric on that interface to be this value. Care is needed to make sure that the sum of costs ensures the best path through the network. OSPF chooses the lowest cost path through the network and will load balance over paths with equal cost to the same destination. 
In this example, we see two paths between the user and the content they are viewing. One path has a cost of 70, the other path has a cost of 60, and OSPF will choose the lowest cost path, 60. The other example, we have equal cost paths. Both of them are 70. So the routers will load balance over the two paths between the content and the end user who is viewing it. Even though from the user's perspective, one upstream link is 10 megabits per second, and the other upstream link is 2 megabits per second. 